Yeah, so our infrastructure's just not set up for that. Well, you can't do five nines availability on a three nines budget. Look, this is coming from the top. We can't just sit here and make excuses. You made it. There's not much time. Uh, what's going on? Bane's on the loose, and our crime critical systems keep going down. Uh, this is what happens when you put a kid named after a bird in charge of IT. Holy sap Hannah, Batman! When your systems go down, you lose business. When mine go down, people die. Right, so what's the problem? Hardware failure. Uh. Some of these mainframes haven't been upgraded since the Adam West days. times. Uh, we need to hurry. On it. Back cave defenses armed. Tracking systems online. Crime net active. <clears throat> what the? Batman, I expected more from you. Your defenses are weak. My defenses were weak. <laughs> That was too close. So, you should be good to go, Batman. You're fully clustered, mainframes and x86 systems all upgraded to SUSE Linux, high availability extensions are working, no more downtime. Thank you, SUSE Master Builder. We can never repay you. Oh no, it was no trouble. No, I made some horrible investments last year. We can never repay you. Oh, okay. Eric. Eric! Thoughts? Guys, we totally got this. Yes, be careful, please. <laughs> so, does every ha does everybody have one yet? Yes, they're all. Okay, they're Every all everybody's got it. Good, good. Okay. Oh, I didn't even notice they were on the seat. Okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, this is this will be fun. The little thumb drive with the cloud on it. So you can go and take that back to your room tonight or this afternoon, and uh, deploy a cloud and start playing around with it. Um, this will allow you to play around with it really, really quickly. So what are some of the reasons why you guys came today? Interactive. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the, com so the comment there was there's too much theory going on. You wanted to see some actual practical implementation? Too much theory, okay. Anybody else want to make a comment? Okay, all the rest of you guys are open. Usually the comments are, you need a PhD, 
or you know, yeah. You want to see how it's supposed to work. You want to see how it's supposed to work. Okay. All right. Has anybody Great. who here has actually tried to do and failed at the uh, just doing the? I'm going to grab everything from GitHub and check it out and do it all. I'm raising my hand uh, legitimately <laughs> here. I I failed at it too. Okay. That's most of the room. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's fine. I'm going to show you right from the very beginning um, on how to deploy your cloud with just a little bit of interactive slide deck here as well. And so we'll kind of go back and forth and we'll deploy a full cloud today. All right. Um, now, there are some things I'm going to show you that you know you can actually deploy a cloud much quicker using some, some, nice, some nice tools that we've implemented with our product. Uh, to be able to batch deploy your entire cloud um, in minutes. Okay, so starting from this little thumb drive, you can plug it in, uh, use it for VMware. You can run your cloud on top of VMware. You can run it uh, on VMware Workstation if you really want to test around and play around with it. You can install it on your own hardware. Just plug it in and boot from it. Play around with it there in your own lab. Um, we also have some different formats available. We have a VMX format. We have uh, some KVM formats. So if you really want those other formats, we'll uh, later on give you a location where you can grab those, those formats, OK? So from this thumb drive, installing to physical machines, virtual machine, and create your cloud platform. From a single image, we then have our admin node. And that's essentially what we're going to be creating here, is our admin node. That admin node has all of the tools needed to deploy your entire cloud. Okay, So let's take a look at that admin node. I'm going to switch gears away from this deck and actually just go to VMware. Can everybody see that? Hopefully that's not too small for everybody in the back of the room. <clears throat> Let me show you what I have here. It's 8 gigabytes of memory, two processors. Uh, it's 20 gigabytes of hard disk. Ideally, in a production environment, you'll want a little bit more so that you can mirror down a bunch of software repositories that are required for your cloud, possibly later on to do updates and other various things in a production environment. Um, I only have a single network adapter. Ideally, in the real world, you're going to want more. You could do this in VMware. I'm going to make it really simple today and just do a single vir uh, you know, virtual network adapter. Um, but ideally, in the real world, you're going to want at least probably five, six network interfaces. And your hardware is going to come with that anyways. Um, and then I have an actual ISO image of the thumb drive that I'm booting up in VMware, I could plug this guy in and point it to uh, the physical if I wanted to as well, and it will work just the same. Okay. So let's go ahead and start this up. And it wasn't fast enough. I'm going to boot from the CD-ROM drive, boot it off the ISO. This is what you're going to see when you boot from the thumb drive. And I'm going to select Install. And he will come up with you know, loading the kernel. And uh, from that point, he'll ask you, do you want to blow away your disk? <laughs> yes, question. Yeah. The only thing that's customized in there is I'm disabling the DHCP on that virtual network interface. But it's, but it's only, basically? Uh, it's actually um, a Repeat natted. The it's a natted network. Repeat the question. So the question. No, I was asking him to for the recording. Yeah. So the question is, do I? Why do I have it as a custom network interface? Um, so it's custom, so I can, dis for one, disable the DHCP. And uh, it is a NATed network. And the reason for that is that it, it's going to have a Pixie boot server on there, and you don't want to yeah. expose that out to the outside world. Yeah. 
Yeah, and on the host side of the machine, I could set up VLANs as well, yeah, so I can get access to the public interface of the cloud and various other things like that. So. Kind of slow. This boot up part. <clears throat> Any other questions? Up to this point. There we go. <laughs> Destroy SDA. So, this is what you would get if you plugged this into your machine and booted it up right now. Okay, so we are actually going to do that. And he's now loading that image onto the drive. That's what he's doing right yeah, here. Yeah, that's what we're doing we're right doing now. Them. This is VMware workstation that we're doing this in. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions while this is loading? Any good jokes? This is the painful part, really. <laughs> yeah, if you boot it off yeah. that machine and click yes on the destroy data, yes, your it laptop will. will be gone. Yeah, you can you can put it in there while you're booted up and go and look inside of it and pull stuff off or whatever if you want to, but uh, don't boot off of it unless you That's right. are feeling dangerous. Now we're going to get to a point where it's going to ask us a few questions, uh, just as part of the setup of the appliance itself. Actually, I would point out, Cameron, that uh, with the file system on there, uh, you can choose any size disk you want, and it'll actually detect what the size of your system is and expand out to fill whatever yeah. that is. So you don't have to worry about choosing your uh, storage to match up with the uh, storage on the image. Yeah, you probably missed the message going by the, uh, the scrolling on the screen there, but it was actually extending the inode table for EXT. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit next on this. You can choose your language settings and keyboard layout. And then you can put in the password that you'd like to use for the appliance. Take what you want. And then, of course, setting your host name and domain for this infrastructure. And then setting up the network. Now, this is really simple. We actually have pre-populated the network uh, with some, some defaults that we like. These are actually defaults that we use in our documentation. Um, so you can go through and you can actually change these. Um, so if you don't like the IP addresses that are in here, uh, feel free to modify that how you like. Um, I'm going to leave it as is. And if you want to get an explanation of what those networks are and what they mean, then stick around for the next session. Yep. <coughs> go back to change. There's a couple of things I want to change on the host name and DNS since this is under VMware, it routes through a dot two and not a dot one from the virtual machine side. So I do need to change that and then also change the default gateway to a dot two. This is only inside of VMware for this, uh, for this case. And then you hit next and it is writing all that configuration out to the disk. And now we can set up some time and NTP settings. I'm from Boise, so we'll set, we'll set it for Boise. <laughs> uh, and then we'll hit next. It'll give us some options to set up uh, and configure NTP. It takes it a moment to write this piece to disk. And then we'll go ahead and add an NTP server. We'll go ahead and select a public. And that is OK. Write that config to disk. Now, most people will skip by this screen, but it has some very important information on here on what to do next. Um, we do have some documentation for this appliance, so if you do skip by this, you can refer back to that documentation. But essentially, the next steps are to run YAST Crowbar. It's a module for YAST that allows you to configure the rest of Crowbar, customize the rest of your network stack uh, for all the various network pieces for Neutron and, and things of that nature. And then run a command called Go. Go will essentially deploy Crowbar onto the admin server. 
So we'll go ahead and finish this. And we'll load up uh, the YAS crowbar module. And we do have a, a beta EULA in here. YAS crowbar. <clears throat> and now this, you can actually change the password for the crowbar user and a couple of other things, set up uh, some other repositories. I'm going to focus on the networks. Um, so this is where you can go in and modify the networking for your entire OpenStack setup. This is very important because if you don't get this part right, then you will have to redo this. <laughs> and by redo, he means reinstall the crowbar. So yes, reinstall, exactly. So I'm going to change, again, the router should not be a dot one, it should be a dot two because this is running in VMware. And so that is actually the only parameter I'm going to change. However, if you do want your uh, floating network to be much larger, you will need to modify that because it really only accommodates for, I, don't, I guess, around 50 IP addresses, which is not very big. So you really want to modify that for a production environment. And the next part is running screen and the go command. Now we put it in screen. Uh, I'm running it from the console here, so screen probably you know it wouldn't it wouldn't really matter. But if I was running it from say SSH. Uh, the crowbar um, execution actually restarts the network and things, and sometimes it disconnects and causes the whole script to actually terminate. So uh, that's why we use screen for the command. Um, it'll go through some checks and start installing some services and completely deploy crowbar, and then we can get into uh, the web interface. Once that's complete, we can actually do a batch deployment uh, which we'll show you here in just a moment. Let me go back to the deck while that's actually configuring there. Any other questions up to this point? Yeah? You're not running SMT on this image? Um, I am not running SMT on this image. This particular image does not have SMT installed either. There is an alternative image out on SUSEstudio.com that does have SMT. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar, SMT is a, called a subscription management tool. It's a, it's a free SUSE tool that caches down your patches and updates locally, so you don't have to go back and hit our servers every time you want to pull patches. Yeah. That makes sense. So you'll want that for a production environment, because that will give you all the repositories that you're going to need to maintain your cloud environment. Okay. I went backwards there. So we have our admin node. Currently, crowbar is being deployed. From there, we'll actually deploy our control node, and then our compute node, our storage nodes, and, uh, and then configure the rest of our infrastructure. Um, so we're going to use a batch in this deployment today. The batch will allow you to deploy your cloud in minutes. Okay, um, And in this particular case, uh, it'll probably take about 18 minutes to fully deploy using the batch. <clears throat> so the things that are, con yeah. Yeah, so the batch uh, script is actually written in a YAML format. Okay, so it's, it's really easy to read. Um, and it has the capability to actually go out and export. Uh, so if you have a configuration you've already set up prior and you want to duplicate that and create another cloud environment, uh, you can actually um, do an export of your configuration into the YAML format and then reuse that again. So it's very convenient for, for replicating your OpenStack cloud. So what, what orchestration tool is, is running the YAML? 
The orchestration tool behind all that is, is Crowbar. Um, if you're not familiar with Crowbar, uh, Crowbar is a tool that um, is built on top of Chef. Um, and so Chef is doing a lot of the work uh, in the background. So it's, it's sending uh, commands to Chef to go out and do work for the, the nodes that it's managing. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and go back to All right, it's almost done. It's transitioning to ready, and then we'll be able to log right into it. Okay. Who here is familiar with Crowbar? <laughs> Nobody. Okay, well, this will be new for you then. <laughs> So Crowbar was an a open source project. It was originally started by Dell, uh, and they, they were on it for a while. They transitioned away from it when they started doing partnerships with other companies that used other deployment frameworks. Uh, and so, uh, so at this point, we are the primary maintainers of the Crowbar project. So uh, some, of the, some of the things that, uh, that, that you run into with Crowbar, such as you know, if you have to change the networking, you have to rebuild the whole thing, uh, that was kind of a legacy decision that we're in the process of trying to fix. <clears throat> uh, but overall, it's a really good and very flexible tool uh, that enables you to get things done uh, quite quickly. All right, it's almost ready. Any other questions at this point? OK. He's telling us he's ready. Yeah, you're not you're you're not writing any for for most deployments. You're not doing any code in Ruby. Um, you may, if you have to have some sort of customized deployment, may have to alter one of the recipes that are in place right there. Uh, but for the most part, it's just point and click through the through the graphical interface that Cameron's got up right there. Um, you'll basically you you get this set up and then you network boot your Pixie boot your systems against it. It'll auto-discover them, and then you can start doing things with them. Uh, in the case of this demo, Cameron's going to batch it all out in a script, but you can very quickly and easily do it for drag and drop as well. Yep. So this is Crowbar. This is the dashboard for Crowbar. And all it's managing right now is just the admin node. That's not really special. So let's go ahead and start up a compute node and a controller and uh, get these all uh, running uh, in our cloud environment here, too. Now, ide ideally, you want to pixie boot Don't do that guy. Uh, these nodes. It will actually hit the crowbar node and pixie boot off of that. So the admin node is set up to pixie boot the entire environment. So from a bare metal perspective, it's set up to manage uh, the entire infrastructure. We'll do the same on this one. Oop, wasn't fast enough. There we go. Yes, it is a full-fledged chef, chef server. Yeah. So you if you're familiar with Chef, you're probably going to be able to dig right in. From a and support maybe, perspective, though, um, you don't yeah. want to go doing too much with it, uh, just because you want to remain a, a, not invalidate your warranty kind of stuff. Yeah. Talk, talk to us before you do it. Uh, so, so it's 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 all designed around. Um, uh, around managing your cloud infrastructure. So if you're doing things like tweaking how the cloud is going to be deployed, uh, those things are fine. Uh, you may want to tell us about it ahead of time so that we can make notes in your file so that uh, uh, when you call into support, uh, they don't freak out. Uh, but I would not go in and add in stuff for like managing you know, stuff outside of the cloud and you're trying to do your whole company uh, off, of, uh, off of the Chef server on here.
And luckily, none of our engineers are in the room, so I can say that. <laughs> It's all on tape. That's right. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm uh, drilling down to the compute node. I'm going to edit the compute node. I'm going to give it an alias. The aliases are actually used for the batch uh, deployment. I'm going to call it compute1. And, uh, and then I'm going to allocate it. The allocation process installs the operating system. Um, you do have choice between you know what operating system you can install. Um, right now, uh, since I've already allocated it, his target platform is SLES 11 SP3. Now it does give you choice between you know Hyper-V as well and SLES 12. Um, so if you wanted to to attach to a Hyper-V environment, you could uh, do that. It does deployment for Hyper-V node. Um, so this will run through the install um, on that, that compute node. So going back to the dashboard, I have another node in there. This one's going to be our controller. We'll change his alias. And here's the drop down I was referring to. Uh, notice the other OS is in there. They're grayed out because I don't have the uh, the bits on the uh, the disk to deploy that. I could also change my intended role if I know what that's going to be. It's very helpful if you're doing this manually instead of batch because that way whatever you select as control node is always going to be the default selection for any of the control node services. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for the Hyper V. Yeah, and the SLES 12 ISOs are not on that image. So if you did want to do uh, SLES 12, you would need to download the ISO for SLES 12 and put it into the admin appliance, okay? There's a specific location for that that's called out in our documentation. You would just ex extract it to the disk and that would be made available uh, for use. This isn't super exciting here. So we're going to switch gears and talk about something else. Yeah. <clears throat> so once we have a cloud deployed, there are various other uh, templates in the cloud. You're probably familiar with heat and, and things like that. Heat can be used to um, basically orchestrate uh, your applications in the cloud. Um, deploying your instances and your applications um, out into your cloud. Um, so deploy your OS, Apache, set up your networking stack, set up your storage, and everything that's required for those instances in your cloud. <clears throat> and it's all orchestrated from the control infrastructure through heat. Out to your com out to your compute nodes. <clears throat> Once you have a compute node up and running, you can scale up, scale down uh, that environment using that same infrastructure. If you're familiar with Solometer, um, that will allow you. If you're using that in conjunction with Heat, will allow you to scale up and scale down that environment. <clears throat> from that same infrastructure, that same batch deployment, if you go back to that admin node, uh, back to Crowbar, you can also do the same thing and have a load balanced environment as well and have a, and be able to load balance your environment uh, through heat um, and solometer, uh, scaling up and scaling down um, and adding uh, a proxy environment in front of, um, let's say, your Apache web environment or uh, your database environment, so you can make that uh, load balanced in your infrastructure. <clears throat> Scaling up to multiple nodes. Um, let's see where that's at here. That 
that guy is not going anywhere. That was the second one you did, so it's a little bit behind. There you go. Ah, there he goes. So the really cool thing about this demo is how exciting it isn't. <coughs> Right, because he's not really doing a whole lot of things. He's just kind of pointing and clicking in a couple of places, uh, and it's doing what he needs it to do. Um, if he was having to do some elite ninja hacking, that would be a problem. We do have images for um, for the compute infrastructure too. So if you don't have the capability of doing Pixie Boot, we've got an image for that, um, and then you just use a um, there's a a chef join, or that's a crowbar join script that joins that server to crowbar so that you can use it in the infrastructure. So there is another method besides just doing Pixie Boot. So if Pixie Boot's not an option for you, there's another method. Uh, and you could manually install SLES on it as well. Question? So have we ever run it on ESXi and, yeah, no, we've run it on ESXi and it does work there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, VMware, yeah, VMware is a fully supported uh, option for deployment. We do, we support uh, VMware, Hyper-V, Zen, and KVM. And then we've got technology previews for Docker, uh, which hopefully will not be technology preview for much longer. Right. And. Uh, I'm trying to think if we have anything else. Nothing's coming to mind. You do? Yep. Be careful, though, <laughs> because you might have another Pixie uh, set up there. So you might have to isolate the network or something so that uh, you're not trampling over somebody else. The plan was not to watch this stuff. <laughs> I actually had it fully deployed this morning, and for whatever reason, the networking stack on the host would not connect to it. Uh, so, so we're redoing it. It's fine. Just demo without a net. So one compute node's done. This one's almost finished. He's going to boot back up here and uh, run a, a, uh, an auto yast and knit script. And uh, then he'll finish up. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, at Crowbar. He's come up green on one of them. Um, let me just dig into Crowbar just a little bit more for you. Uh, Crowbar has this thing called bar clamps. The bar clamps are basically a subset of software that, that it will deploy. Plugins. Yep. So we have the option to select OpenStack. And we have all of the suite of software available for OpenStack out here. And uh, we can go through and start deploying all that. So if you want to do an HA infrastructure, you'll absolutely want to set up your pacemaker first for your control infrastructure. And that's actually pretty cool because you know HA is something that can be difficult to get right. Uh, so in this case, it's completely automated. You can just basically drag a couple of systems together and say, I want you to be part of the cluster, and then just click the Apply button. And that's pretty much your, your setup, yeah. aside from getting your, your Stonop device attached and whatnot. Yeah. So when you do the create there, you're building a template then for that? Yeah, so let me, let me go ahead and Let's see, we'll hit create on this database. And there's not a lot of options to choose from, although SUSE is not giving you any choice on what database you can use. The database we support here is PostgreSQL. Uh, so you could go into raw, and there's a few more options. Um, 
most of the time you're not really going to need to do this. Um, there are some other bar clamps like Keystone, so if you want to tie into an LDAP infrastructure or something like that, you may want to go into the raw mode and edit a few things. Um, but uh, for the most part, that's pretty rare you're going to have to go into the raw mode and edit a few things for the configuration. We put a lot of options out there that, uh, that are most commonly used and we make some good choices for you on, on some of those options as well. So, so, we can, so we make it easy there. controller and computer fully deployed. Uh, back on the admin server, well, let's just make sure that that template was deleted. Yeah, okay. He's gone. He won't conflict now. Um, we do have on, on that USB thumb drive, there's a couple of templates already pre-built for you. So you can go try those out. They're on the, the uh, they're on Root's home directory. Um, there are three files. You have <laughs> drbd.yaml, you have nfs.yaml. Those two are for an HA environment. The drbd will set up uh, a two node cluster um, with drbd replication for the database in Keystone. Okay. The nfs will set up a two node cluster using nfs as shared storage for the HA infrastructure, for your database, for Keystone. Okay, so um, you could you could go with a three-node cluster if you wanted to on that. Um, in a production uh, environment, we recommend running three separate clusters. You would have a data cluster. You would have uh, which would actually have your database and Keystone running in that cluster. You would have a networking cluster. That cluster would run Neutron uh, with a three-node cluster. And then you would have a, um, a services cluster, which would run all of your other uh, services in, in your cloud. Um, so let's go ahead and launch the one that says Simple Cloud. You do crowbar batch build and then point it to your YAML file. If I can type this morning. And then off it goes. You can actually watch what it's doing uh, from the web interface. You go to bar clamps and go to deployment queue. It's going to commit a. It's committing a proposal here. That is moving slow. There we go. <clears throat> and it will show you that um, it's actually deploying some. Uh, it's provisioning uh, various things within uh, the nodes uh, that are running in the infrastructure. Um, if you watch the CLI, uh, right now it's deploying the database bar clamp, so it's putting the database out there. It's just going to go down through um, all of those bar clamps and start deploying. It's deploying the cloud right now. So this will be up in a matter of minutes, and you'll have a full cloud deployed. Any questions? The networking node. This is a simple cloud, so this is a single controller infrastructure. So Neutron is going to be running on the controller, on a, on, with everything else. Um, that I wouldn't recommend for production at all, but just for testing it out, um, this is really simple and easy. Yeah, question in the back.
So he's asking if you can use Crowbar for, for upgrades, right? And funny you should ask, but we, uh, we actually have that built in <laughs> to the infrastructure. Now you can attach SUSE Manager to your environment to give you a much better and broader uh, update stack. But we also have another option if you don't want to go with SUSE Manager. We also have the option to deploy the SUSE Manager client through Crowbar. But we have this thing called Updater. Uh, it's just another pro uh, bar clamp proposal. Um, you can actually go in and uh, edit that, select patch or update or distribution upgrade, and uh, pull over your, uh, uh, the nodes that you want in that and uh, apply the mm -hmm. patches. And it's worth pointing out that there is, you have the ability to filter out patches that are going to require a reboot. So right. if you don't want to install kernel patches on a regular basis, uh, you can exclude those. But uh, upgrading from, uh, from version to version is fully supported uh, by, by SUSE and has been for several since uh, the Havana release. Yep. Good question. Any other questions? Yeah, so he's asking, what about Ceph and other things that you might want to deploy in your cloud? So um, SUSE OpenStack Cloud is set up uh, to actually deploy Ceph. Um, there is a bar clamp for that. And you can actually go and create that proposal and deploy a Ceph cluster um, using Crowbar. So. What, that is, what that's going to do, though, is we have a product called SUSE Enterprise Storage where we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're doing support for Ceph. So that, this bar clamp is going to do that. Otherwise, uh, we are going to, you have the ability in the, others, uh, in the other bar clamp, say for Glance, you can select the Rados gateway and tell it where your existing Ceph cluster is, and you can join it up to that. So we're at the top of the, uh, you know, the minutes for this session. So um, let me just wrap up really quickly. Um, it is, let's see, bar clamp, proposal, Neutron. So it's setting up the network right now. Um, it's got a few more bar clamps after that, and the, the cloud will be fully deployed. Um, and then you can go in and start up instances and, and play around with it. Um, so go play around with this with the cloud I just gave you on the thumb drive uh, earlier. And uh, um, if you want updates to that, come up here. We'll scan your badge and we'll send you update information on the latest version of this appliance, okay? Um, so we will be having you know, regular updates to this appliance, um, <clears throat> making it better, improving upon it, adding more things to it. Um, so if you want that, come up here, we'll, we'll scan your badge for it. <laughs>